So before I start the video, disclaimer, I have my phone right here and this post-it note <laughs> that has words written on it because I screwed up in a job interview royally by missing the email because I put down a bad email when I thought that I'd be checking it and I should have put down my school email and I screwed up and now I'm like digging a hole for myself. <laughs> And we're playing phone tag, so if I have a heart attack on camera, that is because this phone has rung. Hello everyone, my name is Brooke, and today I'm going to be bringing you a new story time video. This one's going to be about my snorkeling experience from hell. So this story takes place back in, gosh, I don't know, maybe like 2007-ish? How old was I? I was like seven. That's, that, that math is not correct, don't try to do the math. <laughs> I think I was seven, so whatever year that was. My family and I went to Mexico for a little vacacion. Clearly I can't speak Spanish. We have talked about this in a story time before. I fail Spanish, or it was a, not a story time. My mom stayed at, back at the hotel and me, my dad, and my brother went scuba, I keep wanting to say scuba diving. We did not go scuba diving, we went snorkeling. They did go scuba diving, but I was not a part of that. So it started off at a little shack where we had to get all of our equipment, and that's where the first problem became an issue. I didn't know it was an issue until way later, but I grabbed two fins. What are they called? Foot things, foot things. So I grabbed two of those, and little did I know I grabbed one size that was completely wrong for my foot. You probably shouldn't leave a seven-year-old to just pick out the flipper things. That's what they're called, flippers. So then we got on a boat and we freaking rode it all the way to the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> so then they have you like fall in backwards and I was terrified to do that so I just jumped in like a child. <laughs> so there were two big problems on this trip. Number one, my shoes. Number two, my brother. My brother is a special, uh, guy. He, um, he over-exaggerates a lot of things, <laughs> and he kind of freaks out a lot. Mostly at me, but this time it was not my fault. So backtracking a little bit, in the boat I had to get my little flipper things on, and that's when I realized that one of them didn't fit. They had extras, but they didn't have any extras that were close to my shoe size because I was a seven-year-old and they had like a bunch of adult extras. I don't know. Either way, I was short a flipper. He told me to just go in anyway, it's just gonna, I'm gonna be a little bit slower, but like, flip away with one foot, be a mermaid, do whatever you feel, you got one flipper, roll with it. But in Spanish. <laughs> Broken English! I stuck by my dad the entire time and we kind of waddled our way toward the reef slightly before our next problem became a problem. My brother, being the spaz that he is, thought that his life vest was too tight and that he couldn't breathe. So then he's like in the water freaking out about how he can't breathe. He had to like go back to the boat and just stop. <laughs> and that took a lot of time. Like it sounds really fast, but he was kind of already a distance before he started freaking out and then like water started getting in his tube and he thought he was drowning or whatever. I don't know what his problem was. All I know is that he kept complaining about his vest being too tight. But after five or so minutes of trying to get my brother back into the boat, me and my dad finally tried to go back to the reef. Uh, when my flippers didn't fit, it took time for the guy to look through the boat to find another flipper for me, but he couldn't, so it was just like a giant waste of time, and that took a bunch of minutes on its own. We were so slow with all these issues that we never got to the reef! <laughs> and to make matters worse, my dad lost our underwater camera, so everything that we saw in the short distance that we went is gone. But even in all that crap that happened, my favorite part was this, like, ginormous. And when I say ginormous, I mean gi freaking normous Stingray. <laughs> like this thing, and I know I was seven, but like it was bigger than my dad, who's six something feet. So as we were flipping our way around in a, probably a circle, uh, this ginormous Stingray that was blue and it had like white dots on it swam directly under us. It was actually really scary because I think not too long before that, Steve Irwin died from a stingray, or was it a jellyfish? I think it was a stingray. But either way, like, knowing that was terrifying. <laughs> I knew that they were really deadly and dangerous, and something this size, I mean, 
its black tail thingy majig that's like poisonous or deadly or whatever happens was whipping up like this, just like gracefully like this. And I'm just like, I'm like, I'm gonna die. This thing is going to hit me and I'm going to die. So basically, that is the story of the time that I took a scuba trip from hell. All in all, it actually ended up being pretty cool because like the fish and the stingray and everything that we saw was amazing. And I don't regret going, it was a lot of fun. I hope to do it again someday and actually make it to the reef this time. In order to do that, I cannot bring my brother. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to give this video a big old thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.